thank you for showing up for episode one of the Underground Live. Today we're going to go over everything SMS into a jam-packed hour of about 30 minutes. And uh, I'll be discussing with Amy how she's doing. I'll be talking a little bit about how I'm doing, certainly with Charles, anyone else that wants to chime in. I would love for you guys to chime in and ask some questions. I'm going to save questions chunked for the end at 10 minutes. So if you got something like real quick, definitely feel free to either ping it or um, interrupt uh, really quickly. But anything that's like a longer question, try to hold it to the end. We're going to hold uh, like 10 minutes and questions till the end. So, um, all right, let's jump in. Uh, just for 10 minutes, talk about maybe the intro and basics of like our SMS campaigns. Um, so for us, that looks like we have a, a full-time VA that we actually just let go last week. But for the past eight months, she was working for us to send about 2,000 to 3,500 outgoing SMS per day. Um, and, uh, you know, with, we basically let her run the show within the parameters of our lists, within the parameters of minimum res or maximum response time of 10 minutes and the average keeping it under that. Um, and then basically define a lead as anyone who says, yes, they want to sell or thinking about selling. So within those basic three rules, we played with a lot of different things. Basically, that's the outline of how we're doing it and everything was in Lead Sherpa. We're jumping into um, launch control a little bit now and now even Batch Lead Stacker has their own. And um, so we're playing around with a bunch of different options. Uh, and it's become very clear to me that the SMS market for uh, investors like us has become a little bit saturated now. So I think it's really important to share some best practices and we can kind of tweak some of those things, right? Rather than getting on uh, this, hitting the same list as everyone else with the same message, uh, really what I'm aiming to do is mastermind around these topics and see if everyone here can benefit by tweaking our messages, tweaking our methods a little bit perhaps. So uh, that's really like the main goal of talking on things like this, to pull as many gold nuggets out of each other as possible. Amy, I'd love to hear what you guys are doing, how you're functioning with it. Sure. So we're using uh, Lead Sherpa right now. Um, we did look at launch control. They're they're very similar. Um, it, it, you know, if you're using either one, I think it's pretty much fine. But if we're talking about lists and just saying structured on that, um, our list that we are hitting right now is obviously um, lists, general lists like unknowns and and uh, absentees and those kinds of things. Um, you know, everybody's kind of doing, and I think is I think that's what you mean by saturated. I I think that's really gotten to that point. And so tax defaults by us, um, we noticed something um, really really unusual, uh, largely because of texting, and that is year over year our tax defaults are a lot of the same people. So um, those have not been performing as well as we had earlier in 19. So now we're primarily hitting really targeted lists, um, foreclosures, evictions, um, for rent by owners, expired listings, um, a lot of that kind of data that we are pulling from a little bit harder sources to get the data from because less people are texting them is what it looks like. Um, and then, um, there's just a horrible uh, amount of landlines that end up in Sherpa. And you and I had kind of talked about this a little bit. And to be totally honest with you, um, we're, we're taking out those lists and we're cold calling them. Yeah. Um, and we've, we've started really hitting that really hard and we're giving text blast a little bit of a break um, other than those really super targeted lists, but we are hitting them with mail, with texting, with cold calling. And so I just consider any kind of text to be, part of the process rather than just the process itself and it will never take the place of mail i i just that's that our market is just always going to be very mail driven um and so now we're just really you know we're hitting it as many times we can on a lot of different sources so were, were you guys ever using sms as like a primary driver for leads for you guys no, we never did. Um, mail has always been our primary driver. Of course, we're trying to get that cost down just like everybody else because the mail is obviously really expensive. Yeah. And so we're targeting that a lot more by uh, using any any one of the lead stacker programs. There's a, a lot of them. I, I personally prefer batch uh, lead stacker at this point. I think you do as well. Um, but any stacker is good. And then it's cut our mailing cost in half over the last year, um, which which has been huge for us, um, just huge, because it hasn't affected um, you know, our bottom line really at all. Oh, that's so, amazing. That's really yeah. amazing. Yeah, so in uh, SMS, that was like one of, this year, really once we joined Fuel, 
And everyone's like, you got to text, you got to text, you got to text. And we started, and saw how easy it was to pull data and just basically throttle it yourself, right? Hit the gas or hit the brake yourself right. um, and pick, cherry pick a lot of leads out of it. We, we really went throttle, a full throttle with it. And um, I think, I don't want to say it was to our detriment, right? We got a lot of deals out of it, but it definitely changed our sales process in a way that got us shifted from where we should have been the whole time and it took us like over a bit. So we started framing leads in a different way and we were getting a different population of leads. And just like last month, we looked in our database and we we're just like, wait a minute, we were basically getting way too many rentals, too many turnkey rentals and junk in the city versus flips in the county. So that's how kind of we classify it in our area. And um, so we basically went back to some old lists and that started this process where we deep dived into the data, Ashley did it and basically found that we were only, uh, when you take a list of just say 100 people, there's only on average for us 35 to 45 people with mobile numbers on there, and then there's no telling who's wrong, who won't pick up, right? So we were getting down to about 40% average, and then by the time, we got about 33% um, connection most of the time when we were texting them. And so by the time we got down to it, we were around six or 7% of our overall list that we were actually speaking with. So like somewhere around 94% of our list, we hadn't even spoken with and we're burning through all these lists, right? We're like, what's the next list? What's the next list? Wait a minute, what? We talked to 6% of them and we're like talking about more lists? This is insanity. And I'm not taking credit for this because Ashley like brought it to my attention. It's like stuff. direct mail return at that point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So actually we shifted into a little bit of direct mail and now cold calling again. But, you know, I still think there's such a, SMS it has so many advantages and I think it's still a, a really great channel but we're just gonna have to shift a little bit on how we've been using it a little bit right and so for us inside of beast mode we're doing a lot of follow-up and even if they won't respond to the first five we're still going six through twelve text messages that are dripping out and so that's within the same kind of channel it's not prospecting as much it's you know uh, we're a little bit deeper but still SMS I think is an excellent channel Right, right. Well, I think it's like anything else is, is that everybody gets very, very focused on stuff and they forget about the things that actually made them money the last couple of years. And so I think what we all have to do is we have to sort of resist that temptation and kind of stick where we're at and say, okay, look, I know I need to mail. The mail goes, the mail goes no matter what. If I want to add something else to it, then, you know, SMS is always a great choice. That's where everyone's moving technology wise. So it makes sense to be texting people as well. And there's nothing that says you can't be texting the people you're mailing. Um, I mean, I, I think people forget that. They're like, oh, I'm texting them or, oh, I'm mailing them or whichever. And I think the big lesson for me over the last year was text them, call them, mail them, knock on their door, uh, leave them something at their door, like that kind of stuff. The old school stuff is old school, but it still works. Uh, there's a reason people get deals off of bandit signs. There's, a, you know, I mean, figure out the two or three things that you can do consistently and then just do those two or three things. Yeah, and, definitely. Definitely. You know, and I think that's really the secret um, of really hitting as many people as you can. And then, like you said, with follow-up, I think people forget. They, they forget to use the same technology for follow-up. And, and uh, you know, I think you've heard Don say it, you know, a million times, especially with Beast Mode or any CRM that you're using, make it make it work to your advantage. And sometimes you have to send 20 texts to somebody before they respond. So be it. They're, they're cheap. Do it. Um, you know, mix it up by throwing a random email out there or a random RVM out there. there. There's nothing that says that you have to blast RVMs. I mean, you can you can send those as part of your follow up. Just send a one off or you know, a group of ten or whatever. But you don't necessarily have to blast the whole world with RVM and then be afraid of getting sued and and the rest of that. You don't you don't have to be that you don't have to be that widespread about your message, but um, but yeah, we, we started cold calling in October um, because I just, like I said, you know, when you and I talked and I posted in the Facebook group too, is the, there's just a million landlines that are just sitting there. We have, I think we had something like 65,000 landlines when I, when I went through all of our lists um, because Sherpa pulls them right out. And so I just pulled them right out and stuck them in our cold calling platform. And anytime anybody looks at me and says, I need something to do. I'm like, cold call. Cold call. I got, I got, you'd be cold calling for the rest of your life and you're never going to get all those numbers done. So, but, um, 
that's just kind of how I look at it. All right. So you talked about direct mail and RVM. Um, and I think that really like cold call, um, direct mail, RVM, and then SMS are like the four biggest channels out there, right? right. And a lot of successful people are now um, using every channel at the same list. Are you doing that? Or in fact, RVMing and SMSing while you're mailing? And are you doing anything around the timing chronology to try to get that uh, down? Right. Well, so the, the cold calling thing is that is just, they are set to do that at certain times. You know, different people are each giving about 10 hours a week to, to do the cold calling. So um, it's not necessarily structured to say, oh, my mail just went out and I'll call these people and the rest of it. Uh, I, I'd love to say I'm that organized, but, but I'm really not. What I can tell you is what's happening at the same time is mail and SMS that's happening at the same time um, to, the, to the same people. Beyond that, it's not nearly that organized for cold calling or RVM. So um, that's just me. If somebody figures out a great way to tie all that together, tell me because I'll tie it all together and somebody will get a piece of mail and a phone call and an RVM and a text in order with you know with 48 hours in between. That would be phenomenal. <laughs> Really, if it were only that easy, I, you know, I've tried to sync up some stuff on my own like that before. Yeah. I always go mad trying to like get the fine details to work and everything to flow at one time. It's hard right. enough to get your RVM to drip out at the same time with the right IVR flows coming back in, you know? Oh yeah. 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 I, I, I'd love to say that I've got that cracked, but I, I really don't. And I, I would love to hear if somebody does because whoever I got to pay, pay to make that happen that'd be pretty cool <laughs> got it okay when i was at so interesting point when i was at a Raphael vargas event the other day i would i would highly highly recommend that if you know i'm a high energy very ambitious guy and i want to you know do as much as i can building my business as fast as i can and i kind of share that philosophy with him he's a little flashier than i am and stuff like that but <laughs> super interesting guy and sometimes you get lost in what's marketing and what's real, but you know, he's got it dialed in as far as numbers and tracking his mail specifically. Um, but he talks about a lot of his lead gen, right? He'll take one list and his, he'll use SMS, RVM and cold call first. The whole list will market to everyone with all three channels at the same time, at the same time. And then he uses that list for a quarter, measures the ROI. And if he gets 4X, 400% ROI on that list, then he saturates them with mail for the next quarter. Huh. So that's how he gauges. So I thought that was a really interesting approach because exactly like you said before, sometimes we get stuck in our minds that these things are all like in silos. Like, I'm, no, I'm texting them, right? right? But really it's interesting to see. It was just so simple from him. He was like, nope, we do whatever we can. RVM, cold call, SMS, everybody. If it's a good list, then we mail them. So it made a lot of sense when he just kept it that simple. And so I'm using that as a little bit of a framework on how to roll forward. Well, I, I think that's good. And if you can, if you can figure out a way to get out of the silo and, and do that, I think that's, that sounds great. I think we'd have to kind of look at what, what are his, what are his factors for determining, yeah, I got four X and stuff, but um, is he then just blanket mailing that list or is he, or is he going through the process of taking people off the list that sold taking people off, you know, if it's, the, the whole thing about data, which is the most frustrating part is you have to constantly clean it and take the people who say, you know, do you take the people who, you know, took the time to come back in and say, don't call me anymore. Do you take them off? Different schools of thought on that. I think it depends on what they did to get taken off the list. Like for me, RVM, they say, take them off the list. I take them off the list just because, you know, you send them through the IVR tree and they press nine and yeah. they're pressing nine like this 400 times. Yeah, I don't want to deal with that craziness. Um, text, take me off the list. Eh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I really take them off the list at that point. Mail, it depends on the piece of mail they've told me. Like if they've, if they've written hieroglyphics all over the piece of mail and sent it back to me and they sound like a serial killer and, you know, they look like a serial killer too from their drawings on stuff or they had a knife of drawing on the thing. Yeah, I'd probably take them off. But other, but other than that, tell, take me off the list just means you're annoying me right now. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going to sell. So, so I guess I, I guess I would ask him under what circumstances is he cleaning that up first? So as my quick understanding of that, he basically never takes anyone off the mail list unless it's sold. So like mail's the one thing you can fall back on. Like I, I heard yeah. a statistic, I think it was Alex Pardo on his podcast, but he said uh, he had to call the um, Federal Trade Commission because he had a complaint. 
and he was panicking, right? And the lady's like, sir, don't worry about it. And he's like, what do you mean, don't worry? And she's like, sir, do you know that we get 1,100 complaints per day about <laughs> Bed Bath & Beyond coupons in the mail? 1,100 per day. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't so, worry about it, is right. From there, yeah. but then it like, stops the RVM because it's more litigious. You know, it, it's a, the possibility right. of being litigious. Right. Let's shift gears real quick and talk about what kind of things you think are working for you and you're kind of like leaning into more and then what kind of things you're like kind of pulling back on. Because I know we got a, a few things we're pulling back on and I'm, out, I'm proud to say that because those are like lessons learned. I don't, I don't take those as like being embarrassed or anything. I take those as like a chip on my shoulder. We learned something. We're ready to roll, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, I feel the same way. There's, it, the, there's one thing about this business that's constant and it will constantly teach you lessons about yourself. And, and uh, I used to have a problem with that. Like I didn't want to tell people, oh man, I sent that mailing out and that thing tanked so bad. We didn't even get one response. I can, t I can tell you like the, the one really cool thing about SMS is you get to change your message. And I, I really got creative with our messages this year on SMS. I mean, we have one that says, hey, because um, I, I think I mentioned to you uh, when, when you're in a state that has weather, a lot of people try and put it off for when there's no longer bad weather. It's, you know, 30 degrees today and we haven't seen the sun for a week. It, it affects your cycle, uh, your sales cycle a lot. So a lot of people are saying to us, um, you know, we're going to sell in the spring. So we changed our text messages to say, don't wait till spring. The market's hot now. Call me. You know, that kind of stuff. I even got one where I where I said, have you heard about the gray tsunami? Don't lose out, sell your house now. I mean, if you don't know what the gray tsunami is, it's a, it's a, um, a theory that all, all the boomers are gonna sell their houses at the same time and that, sorry about that. Um, all the boomers are gonna sell their houses at the same time and um, I don't even know what phone number that is right now, sorry. Um, Anyway, um, they're all going to sell them at the same time and it's going to kill the market. And so we threw that one out there. That made people so mad, but they responded because they were super mad about that. They didn't like that at all. But I mean, you got to really mix up your messages that that's and get personal because it, the more you seem like a robot or your messages are the same as everybody else's, um, that's not productive um, at all. And then, like we mentioned before, really cleaning those lists up a lot. And, um, and we're, we're really switching the market up. And cause I think SMS right now, it, it's, it's kind of like everything else. Everybody's jumping in. So it's getting harder and harder to, to really be successful with it. No big deal. Um, go do something else. You know, we're, we're cold calling. Everybody said for years, the mail is dead. It's never dead. People just quit, you know, and, and they don't want to pay for it and they don't want to send it out consistently. So that, I mean, that's, that's what I see over and over and over again, but, um, but yeah, you got to change those messages up with SMS or, or y you'll see your production go way down. Yeah. 100%. I love that about SMS too, that you have the ability to change the message and get instant feedback on it. Unlike mail where you say, oh, yeah. oh, shit, I guess that tank looking back three months now, but you get right. to change it rapidly and rapidly iterate. I love that about it. Cause you can test things like that. Have you tried perhaps, you know, pulling negative on anything like a Martinez method of, you know, I'm not sure if this is even the right person or anything like that? Yeah, we do that a lot with the expired listings or the foreclosures because those people don't want to talk to you whatsoever. So we go very negative. We say something like, hey, I don't know if you're interested or not, but we're really looking to buy a house in your area. Um, you wouldn't want an offer, would you? Or, you know, like something, something like that. You got, it's really hard to jam that in, in 160 characters. Yeah. And so we, we do, sometimes we do a lot of abbreviations, um, misspellings. I don't know why, but that really gets people to respond. Um, when you misspell something or you, you, in order to get it all in, you got to tighten it up into like one word. Oh man, people respond to that like crazy. Hey, you know, you'll get a lot of, hey, stupid, why don't you fix your tax or whatever. But, but it, it's really easy to do engagement then because you just go negative with them and go, oh, I'm so stupid. Thanks for pointing that out to me. You wouldn't want to sell your house, would you? You know, so, something like that. So I, what, what messages have you found kind of work? Um, so before we had started, we had started really targeted and then we backed it out and, and got narrow. So at the beginning, it was just like, you know, I know this is kind of out of the blue. This was six, seven months ago. I know it's kind right. of out of the blue, but are you still the owner of blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then we would change it to, uh, hey, 
hey, I know this is kind of random, but are you, well, same kind of thing, same iteration. But then we would say like, hey, is this David? And like, they would get him to say yes. So we were playing around with that. If we get him to engage a little bit quicker, if we could get the response rate up and see right. if did anything to the conversion rate or at least the leads. Right. Um, I don't think we saw anything that was really measurable. Um, but the thing that we did see is that we were, um, slowing down. We're almost having our halving our rate going out of outbound messages because you're having to send two messages instead of one, right? Like, yeah. hey, this blue, and then are you interested in selling? So it yeah. slows down that way. And our, our girl was getting down to like a thousand a day. And we were, you know, we couldn't understand why. And that kind of slowed us down a bit. Um, good, good test, I think. But um, ultimately, we found that going in, getting to the point, but being real is, uh, been the best for us so uh you know i for instance i saw someone when they were first starting out i think it was at fuel or one, one meetup when they were like i've had no success with them at sms and i was like oh why and they're like I, I have no idea i'm doing it like everyone else is and they were using roar and i was like let me see your message and it was just like hey amy my name is josh and i just bought a house in your neighborhood are you interested in possibly selling it press one for cash off for now press nine to opt out Oh. And then it was like, it said something at the bottom too, like, um, this is not spam or something else like on the bottom. And I was like, dude, you're, you're like killing it right now with this because you're just whacking them over the head. No one's ever going to respond. They should think it came, like my philosophy is they should think it came from my iPhone, right? Like this is a one-off message. And your point about like having something misspelled or even something, you know, uh, as far as the grammar. I think that's a really good tip right there. I, I might work start working something in like that purposely. Well, the other thing that I do, and, and this is against all the rules, so take it for what you want, but, but we just started telling people right away, um, hey, I see you're going into foreclosure. I'd really like to help. I, don't have the, I only have 160 characters, so we got, we got kind of aggressive with them. But I, I guess I got frustrated with dancing around the issue because they're always like, well, how'd you get my number and why are you contacting me? And I'm like well, let's be nice. Well, you know, it's public records and you know, la la la. No, I, I just said, forget it. You're going into foreclosure. Why don't you just let us help? You know, we can help you with a short sale. We can buy it. We can help you, you know, get into something else. Don't, don't let them make you homeless. And surprisingly, at first people were very negative about it. And then, and then you just kind of go, okay, look, I could have just danced around this and you know, been kind of obtuse with you, but don't you just appreciate that I was like, hey, I can help you. If you don't want any help, fine. I don't want to waste a lot of time here. Let's just move forward. Cause that's what I would have done if I knocked on their door. And, and Josh, I don't know if you know, but it, that's how I started in 2001. I got a list of foreclosure from the courthouse and I just went and started knocking on their door and asked them if they wanted to sell it to me before the bank got it. And so I guess I'm kind of going, uh, using technology to go a little old school on it, but sometimes a spade just is a spade and you kind of have to just, you know, maybe if it didn't work, I wouldn't do it anymore. But you know, some, sometimes it's just enough is enough. And and people like that, you know, people yell at you, but they yell at you anyway. So what difference does it make? Bold, bold, bold. I like it. Okay. But right, we're moving into the last part. I do want to get to some questions. So if anyone's got questions, uh, I think there's a button to like raise your hand or some shit or type them in the messages. Um, but Amy, how um, have you seen any average as far as how many outbound you got to send roughly per deal? Have you seen anything like that? Ours is kind of all over the place. So I, I would say with the really targeted list of foreclosures, it's taking us about 700 people to get that, that couple of appointments that turns into a deal. But then remember, we're following up with them forever. And I don't have a number on, on that with the follow-up because I break it down by this was instantaneous and this was follow-up. So I can't really answer that. Um, John just John just commented that um, he he said people appreciate the honesty. So um, I I I think I think that's probably true. So okay. So with foreclosures, I danced around them very carefully before. Uh, yeah. and then it's just like, do they know that I know that they know? And you know, I get tired of that. I mean, how long can you really play that game with them? You know, you you just have to go. You know, look, I'm gonna take a chance here. I, I see that you're going into foreclosure. I, you know, we have helped people in foreclosure for, for almost 20 years now. What can I do to help? You know, and so it's not always necessarily like this, you're going into foreclosure and you need help. You, 
you can do it like John said, you can do it in a way that is nice, but sometimes the dancing around, you know, it just gets to be a little much. Hey, you're going into, you're going through a divorce. I too went through a divorce. It sucks. If you, you know, if you end up with the house or if you need some help with the house or you guys are fighting over the house or whatever you want to say at that point, um, I, I just, I just think cut through the crap because so many other people are dancing around with all these texts and they're just, you know, fiddling around forever and people get sick of it. Like I'll be the one person who is like, dude, you got a foreclosure. Let's fix it. You know? So I, I don't know. I, I don't know if anybody else has had, you know, better success. Can you, uh, can somebody, you know, unmute yourself if, if you've, you know, been doing these texts and had that kind of thing, or you have a question or how do you want to run it, Josh? Um, yeah. If you guys, so on the bottom left, there's a button and you're probably muted automatically. So you can unmute yourself and talk up. If you got a question, please do. Um, and, uh, you know, please chime in. We'll be here for maybe five to 10 more minutes and then we'll go. I do want to keep these really brief guys just to make them actionable and make sure we're fitting a lot in and then also allow you to get back to your day. Right. I want to go follow up on a bunch of offers that I've already made today. And, uh, I like everyone here, but I don't want to hang on this for two hours and feel <laughs> out. You know, that's the worst for me is that someone asks you to lunch or something. You're like, all right, what are we talking about? How long is it going to be? Right. So I want to put it in a box and make sure everyone can like get something out of this and know that it's going to end and not go on forever. Um, in our market, we've seen, for us, we've been right around the 5,000 mark that we've seen for deals. Um, in, in last year, we started in May and went, obviously, to the end of the year. Uh, we pulled nine deals exclusively from text um, and actually found out that out of, out of those nine, six out of the nine um, were her leads in the first four weeks of texting. So in her mind, uh, she's like, I'm way more efficient than our girl was. Maybe we should have someone here in the States do it. <laughs> in my mind, you know, uh, from here, I'm like, your time is not best spent pushing that button over and over and over again. So that's something we're going back and forth about now. And I know a few buddies like Jimmy Ogle in Oklahoma is uh, he has his acquisition guys come into the office and send out a minimum of like 300 a day. So I know some other people are, are doing that. Um, yeah, I, I use my acquisition guy and then I'm the backup for it, honestly, because I can sit here and do what I need to do and still respond to people as, as a backup. Um, and then I think, uh, are, am I texting, are you cold calling mobile lines as well? Or are you cold calling the mobile lines as well um, that you're already texting? Yeah, I'm taking everything out and throwing it into the mix of cold calling. I started with just the landlines. Um, but I'm not paying any attention to it. I'm just, we're just running through, you know, a thousand numbers at a time uh, with the cold calling stuff a couple yeah. times a week. And, um, you know, somebody has got to do that full time. I just haven't got somebody to do it full time yet. Sam, to answer your question, we are uh, calling, yes, the same list. Also landlines in there. Um, to be perfectly straightforward, we just started cold calling really heavy again. Uh, this time with Zen Call. I do not know how to use Zen Call too well yet. Uh, I had an onboarding call today that I actually missed because I was on deal doing deals. Um, but um, uh, right now, Zen Call I think is really cool because it will go up to 12 lines per agent. And so if it sees that their talk time is too low, um, it will ramp up to 12 lines to make sure that you have someone constantly connecting. And so our connection rate of this past week now has been 36%. Wow. We have like a five and a half percent abandon rate. So really we're having conversations with like over 30% right now, which is really high. That is um, high. They do something as far as AI, they say it's a predictive dialer to connect you with certain people at certain times. I don't know how deep that goes. I don't know how true it is, but I can tell you that um, we were a good day for us on SMS before was like, 18 or more leads with SM or with um, cold calling. Now we're getting almost the same out of two cold callers though. It's not just one, it's two seats. That's but cold that, calling though. I mean, it, it's random. So I don't think you're that far off. Um, you know, where, where you would normally expect to be. But then again, it also depends Are these U S based cold callers or are these overseas? They are friends in the Philippines. Uh -huh. So I've screened, I'll go on this another day, but I, I got a pro it's basically top grading that I'm doing for these guys over there. And okay. I feel like I've been able to draw a pretty good talent pool for, and if you guys don't know in the Philippines, if you pay them $4 an hour, it's like paying 30 or $40 an hour here. It seriously is. They'll go make five to $6 a day for a heavy construction job, a job, five to six a day. 
where they're making three to five an hour with someone in the US. So really, really good resource because of that monetary exchange. Um, but no, we're using um, friends of the Philippines. They're actually really good at speaking English. Their English is really good. So I screened really heavy for that this time. Yeah, yeah. All right. Guys, any, any more questions before we go, guys? Past 4.30, I don't want to hold everyone up. I think Amy's dropped some gold nuggets on this so far. Um, I would love to answer any questions. Amy would love to answer any questions. Throw in any comments, anything that you want to know, discuss around for a minute, let me know because we're going to go in a minute. Uh, don't sell yourself short, man. I, I love that uh, that concept you got from from Vargas. That's that's good stuff. You know, I'm trying to figure out maybe maybe pushing your mail to the end of the cycle with that you know, I wouldn't stop mailing, you know, during that quarter, I definitely would not stop mailing um, until you kind of figured that out. Do your regular mail, throw all that big junk of stuff out, you know, your RVMs, your tax, and what else is he doing? Uh, RVMs. RVM, tax, SMS, and mail. Okay. So basically yeah. the, the first three are all the same list. So cold calling RVM and SMSing that whole list. Yeah, yeah. So I would keep your mail going while you're doing the rest of that stuff, and then you know, then change your mail up for that next quarter. But don't don't stop mailing. That's that's the thing that killed me every time. As soon as I stop mailing, boom, right down, right down the, right down the production. The production goes way down. So. Yep last year just to give you an idea all of last year maybe maybe we sent five thousand pieces total last year in the mail yeah. it was never anything regular for us but this year it will be we're going to get up to over ten thousand pieces in the month um we just, just i mean I, I would say josh be careful with that make sure you run it through the through the stacker and like for me I, we used to send that kind of that level of mail but now it's much more targeted mail because we're not mailing unless they're on a couple lists. So I, I think that's that's super important to not just, you know, hey, I'm just gonna throw 10,000 out. You might only have to send out 2,500 or 3,000 really and get the same result. So- That's a great point. That's a really great so point. I, just don't spend the money to spend it. But trust me, ask me how I know, Josh. I mean, really, I mean, we spent way too much money on mail and we, we did not need to do that. So right. we're, we're getting a lot more targeted with it now. I would absolutely love to. We're going to do these every Wednesday, guys. Wednesday at four, just like this for a half an hour. We dive into one topic specifically, so I don't want to bleed off into other areas right now. But Amy, I would absolutely love to talk about direct mail, direct mail targeting, um, right? You know, as a one entire topic, if we have time for it another day. Um, oh, that's yeah, get get Todd to get Todd to come on and talk to and talk to everybody about it because honestly he's not sending out all the mail he knows what's working and what's not and i honestly sometimes i call him to get this straightened out he if you're not using todd swaggerty as a as a reference point you should because he can help you save a ton of money and it's not in his best interest and so i don't want to blast you know todd or anything but he really he really is um the guy who will help you straighten out your mail if you need help yeah fantastic yell letter hq um, what are your typical results for mail, Brett asked. Like, oh, what are my typical results? It's it's pretty typical. You're you're gonna hover around that that five percent to ten percent. But for me, we're sending out about five thousand pieces of mail a month. Um, like I said, very targeted, and that will we know generally that that is gonna get us four to five deals. And and for me, it's a little bit different because I also have a brokerage. So we, we're, we're, I'm counting the brokerage deals as well. So it's a little bit different. Some months, some months there's no wholesale or flips in there and they're nothing but brokerage deals. Some months it's a mix. Some months, you know, we, we just, we, we monetize the hell out of every lead, no matter what I have to do, whether or not it's listed and then, and then we buy it or it's just listed and, and we get a commission out of it. Either way, we're, we're generating revenue from those leads however we can. I absolutely love that. Uh, I don't think it, there's that many people that are doing it that way, uh, particularly yeah. with the retail leads. Uh, and that's definitely something we're working to increase this year. So that's excellent strategy in itself. But I would love to talk about uh, mail, targeting mail, split testing mail, results, ROI, lists, anything like, you, like that in the future. Um, guys, yeah. so after this one, um, let me know, be serious, and let me know what you liked, what you didn't like about this one. Um, and we really, in a half an hour here, we really just scraped the surface of SMS, just some basic strategy, how we're using it, platforms, list, that kind of thing. Uh, we can go deeper into targeting and the messaging and the list. 
whatever you guys would like to in the coming weeks. We can go into cold calling. We can go into direct mail. Any of these other things, we can go into RVM. Um, any of these things, that's what we're going to do on a weekly basis here and kick it around, bring different people on to talk, hopefully some other experts to bring on. Amy, I consider you an expert for sure. Thank you. Amy is awesome. You're near Milwaukee, right? I am. I and am. we know each other from Fuel, and um, you're also partners with Don, who is the owner of Beast Mode. So um, I feel like super, I, I feel great. It's like a selfish thing that I know you, and I know Don, and I know T-Swag, and I know, you know, all these guys that are like owners of software companies and things resources that we all use in our businesses right i feel so fortunate to know people like you guys but you know just to have you as friends and knowing that you're experts in your own space it's just really incredible what we can bring to the table and like extract out of discussions like these i think these discussions are great and especially everybody has a different you know a different point of whatever they're really good at and i i think you're really good at data i think you guys you know are one of the you're one of the ones that i know really harps on it the most and so um, you know, whatever you can share about data, Josh, I mean, you got, you guys really got it dialed in. So, um, That's you know, you I, I, I think it's great. I, I learned, I learned a lot just from talking with you about, you know, how you're handling data and stuff. So, so I think these are great and, and I, let's grab some more people and, and make this a weekly thing. I think that's a great idea. Absolutely. All right, guys. Yeah. Dan, the Dan, I met the Dan at, uh, John Martinez last year. Real quick story and then we'll go. The only way I found John Martinez is because of Don. And the only way I found Don is because when I used to send a little bit of mail, they had the Podio link at the top of the old letter HQ site. Oh, so really, I don't even mail that much, but I found Don through mail and then I found John Martinez through Don and then I found Fuel through John Martinez. Oh, so it's like go. a strange uh, chain of events, how like I, I started to get to meet all you guys, but it's just been an incredible journey so far. So. Um, awesome. Thank you so much for being here. I won't take any more time. Any parting words from you, Amy? No, I'm good. I, I can't wait to see you next week. So what's, guys, what's the topic going to be, Josh? I don't know yet. Guys, us? do me a favor and be honest and just let me know uh, one or two things that you liked, one or two things that you didn't like. Um, and then most importantly, let me know what you would ideally like to talk about in coming weeks. So we can either start a poll, but just in the comments below the discussion in the Facebook group here, just let me know what you would like to talk about in the coming weeks. Doesn't have to be next week, but just in the coming weeks. Is it cold calling? Is it mail? Is it RVM? Is it going something deeper into SMS? Just let me know in those comments. And I, I really want to make these discussions around what the group gets value out of. So just going deep into like these expert level discussions, I think will be awesome for everybody. I like it. I like it a lot. So I'm looking forward to next week. Thanks, Josh. All right, guys. The elevator's going up. We're leaving the underground. <laughs> See you guys. Don't forget to comment. All right. Thanks, Josh. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.